Good afternoon, all. Camelback Trading 2724 coming to you this Friday afternoon, April 17th. We are looking at the market profile of the SPY ETF here on Window Trader. And once again, the Bulls, what a winning day, come out of a four day balance, five day balance to the upside and hold it. Although initially it didn't look like they would, look like it would be just stretching a bit, but they come on late again. M Peary does its little dance and we go out with a price probe. We get right to that critical 287 level. We close it below it at 286.64. However, right now in the after hours, we're trading higher. I mean, look at this. They even gapped it up to 288 and change here in the SPY in the uh, after hours. Volume overall, 134 million with the after hours. So we're going to do about 140. Again, nothing great. We're averaging 212, although M period's volume was 21 million. So it was very good volume in the last time frame. We do go nine wide. We don't, can't, even with this pop, we do not raise the POC. The 350 algo does its thing. I did not get involved because it never really pulled back. Remember I say M period opens, usually gets away, comes back to it. Well, M's opening was the low of the time frame, but we'll get to that in a minute. I'll go over my trades first. Um, a lot of mental capital, a lot was used up early in the day today. The, again, just like Wednesday afternoon, a good party yesterday and today, a lot of conflicting data. And by that I mean we opened with a gap. We had higher value. <clears throat> Yet we one time frame down. There was a chance for a trend day down, but it failed. I didn't think we were going to have it. But we had a lot of trouble. We never saw the opening. To put it in perspective, even though the market was up, 2.7% we close up. We didn't see the opening after B period till M. We had a poor high all day, except M took it out. <clears throat> Thought we had an afternoon rally high. That quickly, that, the, the, that tone for me changed in L period. As soon as L started going, I said that H high is not staying and neither is the high. So early on, I didn't do anything in A period. However, in B, yes, B started one time framing down. So here's the 14th. Here is the high of the, of the, of the daily balance we were in. And we started getting into it, trading right around M's, M's range. I took a long position. Again, it was nothing big. I never really got that big considering how long I held it and everything. It was, long, it was big enough, but I was long in B. So it was really one trade, B, C, D. Kept adding. I did not, though, add really on the bottom because the lower we went, the more I thought there was a possibility we are going to end up flushing, maybe going for the gap. Remember, this was emotional buying all overnight, the way they ripped this up from uh, after the close yesterday. So that, w that was in the back of my mind. But we did have the gap. We did have higher value. We did have... You know, B, C, D, we were three out of four wide. I'm like, you know, I needed to get back into the initial balance. Now, the problem was, even though I was buying calls that expire next Friday, the premium on them was already uh, was already eroding a bit. So by the time we got back to where I initially bought, they were still below where I bought by a decent amount. I ended up losing on the trade. I got out of it in D period when we popped. Got out of it in D. In fact, in fact, we didn't have, we didn't have, um, we had single prints. I apologize. The ES had filled their single prints, but we still had a trend day down the SPY. I really thought, that was another reason I thought we were going to go back and get them. So finally, I took the trade off, lost money on it, but certainly, certainly nothing um, what I was down when I was long down here. I'm sorry, down here. Still don't think it was the, a poor trade to take, but you live and learn. Now, after that, I relaxed. I didn't do anything. 
an <clears throat> EFGH. I watched it. I was looking possibly for an afternoon rally high, although I was also saying, you know, with the internals being strong and everything else, I don't know if that's going to happen. <clears throat> but we had already taken out our pre-market low and the initial balance low, so the odds of taking out the other side aren't great. Although this is the second time this week we did it again. So in I, I wanted market generated information. I wasn't going to keep, I wasn't going to short it up here. I didn't know if we were going to continue to just go higher. So when I opened, got higher and could not take out G's high, let alone H's high, I took a short position. I was looking to go back down to POC where we were six wide. It kept doing a dance back and forth. I took some off, put it on. I just kept doing it. And then in J period, I was still short. J went up. I added some more. I was like, I think we're finally going to get it. We're seven wide. I think we're going to push down. That's exactly what happened. Push down, and I took everything off, the balance off, right at the um, initial balance low. So it was a good trade. Then in K, I was looking now to fade a new low on the day if we had one. Right? Thought the odds, right? We're one time framing that framing down. I, J, K. I thought the odds were good. We could possibly test the low, but come right back in. Right? We're already eight wide. I thought the odds of being nine wide were gonna be good. And again, the gap was holding, values holding. If the sellers couldn't get it done here, I didn't think they were gonna get it. I didn't think they were gonna do it in K period. M period's a different story if we were trading down here. Okay. So I did take a position, not a big one, but I started around K's low because if we took out the day's low, I would not have been, I, I, I was actually hoping we did so I could add to it. That never happened. It went up. And then again, in L period, I got long, added to the position, and then took it out. I forgot where I took it out. It might have been, I got long L. I got long K down around the low. I got long L, I think, right before we popped K's high because I figured the one-time framing down was going to stop. And I think I took it off all around Pac. So it was a good trade. Now, Lady M. Like I said, it opened, never went down. I was looking for it to push down, possibly get to 10 wide and take a long. I thought the odds of taking out the high were going to be very good, especially with that 350 algo we talk about. Well... That didn't happen. We went straight up. We actually took out the high way before 350, and then we were back and forth through it. So for me, the, that that play was over. I didn't want to. Um, I didn't know how much it would pop if it did. Lo and behold, 350 came, and we did about a dollar right off the bat a minute, and then another 30 cents afterwards. So the the move hasn't been as big as recently when we were really volatile, but you're still getting it. And again, that 350 algo. For the most part, whatever direction the market is trading in, depending on where you are in M period at 350, it's going to pop that way. So since we were up, the odds of it popping higher were good. And that's exactly what we did. Now, I did put my money where my mouth is after we popped. And actually, I did it right before the market closed. 287 is my line in the sand. I took a 287 put. Not a big one, but I took a 287 put that expires next Friday. I'm going to say it's kind of unlikely we'll just blow through that level and continue higher right away, but it remains to be seen. I never like going home with a position, but it's not a big one. I figured I always talk about that level, so I would take a position. Okay, destinations for Monday. Upside, 287.30. This Today's high. It's also a weekly high. And then we have 288.52. That's another weekly high. And then filling a gap at 290.23, 171 point gap. And then 295.07, nine wide for March 6th. And then I'll give you one more. 298.78, daily high. And then filling another gap at 300. Yep, 300.01, 123 point gap for March 6th. <clears throat> I really didn't think I'd be talking about those levels so quick again. For the downside, we have today's price probe, which starts at A's high, right? We're not going to know if it's accepted or rejected until Monday morning, 285.68. Then below that, we have the 9 wide, E's high at 283.84. 
And then today's low of 282.40 and then filling the gap from yesterday at 280.03, a 237-point gap. <clears throat> and then on the charts, if I could find them, here we go. Monthly, one-time framing down. Again, you heard me this morning. Yes, we're above the trend line, but the month's not over yet. So it's still around that two, figure around the 278 level. We'll see if we hold it. We're almost $9 above it right now. Weekly. We go out at the high of the week, one time framing up for four weeks. Critical 287 level. I'm not going to go over it again. If you're not sure why it's critical to me, please watch this morning's video. Here's that next weekly high, and then here's the other one. Daily. Broke out of a, it was a five day, I thought it was four. Five day balance, break out of it to the upside, on a gap, hold it, and stay above the previous balance high by over $2. We also, for the first time that we got here, closed above the 50 day moving average. So again, one day does not make a market. Are we just going to continue to just shoot higher and, and, and now go for the 200-day moving average, which is at 301? Possibly. But I think, I think that 287 level is kind of important, and we might battle it for a while. Remains to be seen. I hope you had a great day trading. Thanks again to everybody in my trading room. It's a great group. Please check us out at camelbacktrading.org. Very, very affordable. It's great for people who trade the ES or the SPY and use the market profile. Have a great weekend, everybody, and I'll speak to you prior to the opening on Monday.